Hello, hello, trade pros and traders. I hope everyone's doing really well today. And we've got another special video for everyone. And in today's video, what we're going to be talking about is breaking down what short interest is or what short float is and how we can use that to our advantage to find those great big market movers. How we can use short float in our analysis to find those crazy market moves and to find those amazing opportunities for buy stop runs short squeezes call it what you will so we're going to be breaking down number one what is a short interest how we can use it where we can find it and how to find those crazy stocks that run 20 30 40 percent in a single day so this could be used for options or stocks and i want you guys to smash that like button hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell to notify you when we do actually go live and when we post videos like these every weekend so it's a great strategy that i want to introduce to everyone we've made an earlier video on how to find these but today we're going to be talking about the breakdown of the short float and going forward so without further ado let's go through that intro and we'll see you guys on the other side Let's first go through the short flow. What is the float? What is the short flow? What is short interest? Are they the same thing? So first of all, we talk about float in reference to the total number of tradable shares in a company's stock. Now, the short flow or short interest are interchangeable as the total number of shares of a particular stock that have been sold short by an investor but they haven't been closed out yet. So these are opened shorts and they can be represented in a percentage. So when expressed as a percentage, the short float or short interest is the number of shorted shares, which is divided by the outstanding shares or the total float. So for example, if we're looking at a stock and it has 10 million shares outstanding, right? It's got a total float of 10 million shares. And you can see that maybe 2 million of those shares have been shorted. Now, the short interest or the short float would simply be taking the 2 million that have been shorted and dividing it by the 10 million that are totally in the market, which would equal to 20% of a short float, meaning that this is a relatively high short float and there is a potential for what we call a short squeeze. Now, most stock exchanges track the short interest in each stock and it's reported towards the end of the month. Um, and some stocks actually report the short interest or short float twice a month. So we get a rebalance on the short interest that could drive us to see which stocks may be in for a short squeeze. Now, it's important to discover what a short squeeze is as well before we jump too much into this. Now, a short squeeze can be seen as an amazing opportunity for bullish traders or investors. So it's based on the short interest and how large the short interest is. So by definition, the short interest is the amount of shares that is actually shorted outstanding in the market. So if you're short selling a stock and the stock keeps rising, rather than falling, right? You want it to fall, but instead it starts rising, then you'll most likely want to get out of this position before you lose a lot of money. So short sellers, naturally, they want to see the position or the stock itself drop for them to actually gain money. Because if you think about it, technically a stock can rise infinitely. So if it passes that threshold barrier of your break even and it starts going, then you're going to want to start covering. Now, what does a short seller do to cover? They actually buy back the stock, which increases the demand and decreases the supply, which forces that price to go up. So a short seller turns into a buyer the second they want to get out of this position. So that's how these short squeezes happen. And they occur more often in smaller cap stocks, which have a very small float to begin with. So a few shares outstanding, but there's also massive cap stocks, large cap stocks that get short squeezed as well. So that means if a stock in question has a very high short interest, right, or a short float through a certain threshold, that stock is going to be forced to liquidate and cover its short position by purchasing the stock and that short squeeze happens or a buy stop run, call it what you will. Now, 
What is generally a large short float? So by standards, you'd consider anything above 10% a decently high short float, but I like to go a little further and consider anything above 20% to be a very good opportunity. So if I'm looking for stocks with short floats, number one, I'm going to be looking at a short float greater than 20%. Number two, I'm going to be looking at a stock that is near highs because that short float can continuously run. So it's something that we want to watch out for. Now, the strategy that I'm going to explain to you starts off with Finviz, for example. So Finviz is a great screener that offers us the ability to actually look at a company's short interest or short float, which is great because we can see charting on Finviz as well, not only the short floats. But like I explained in a previous uh, video, what you can do simply is look at the screener and go into descriptive right here. And if we're looking at short float, this is the main thing that you want to pour your attention to. And if I want to be extreme about this short squeeze, I'm going to be looking at short floats over 40%. So I don't want to be, so if I want to be extreme, I want to be looking at short floats over 30%. So I want to see massive potential short floats in any stock. So if I just use this one screener at aspect right here, what I'm going to be seeing is a short float of 30% and greater. And you can see we've found 64 stocks. Now I haven't changed the market cap or anything because I like to look at these as potential options or potential stock picks, right? So if they are under $10, I'm probably going to do commons. Um, if they're over $10, I will probably do options. Now I want to see which ones are optionable. You can see we've drilled it down to 60. And if we go into ownership right here, this is where we can see our short float. Now, if we organize it, click it twice here to go from top to bottom, you can see one of our favorite GMEs has 140% short float. So how is that even possible? So the easiest way to explain a short float over 100% would be assuming that you have a company with, let's say, 100 million shares outstanding. Now, you divide it into two, 50 million and 50 million, right? And let's say 50 million of them are with institutions that participate in stock lending programs, which makes it easier for brokers to locate. So that means that shorts borrow those 50 million shares and sell them, right? And then the other 50 million are sold shares that end up with institutions that participate in other stock lending programs. So shorts borrow those and sell them again. And you can continuously borrow and continuously short and continuously lend. So it's a very interesting concept. And once you start passing thresholds like that, it gets pretty aggressive. Um, and you can see a short squeeze like there's no tomorrow that could last days and days and days. Take in GME. So game. This is one of the stocks that has seen a short float of over 100% for multiple days now. Now this stock started off at about $20 a share. And this was on January 13th. January 13th after that, until January 21st, we saw that there was strong rotations sideways on this name. Long and behold, everyone finds out that this guy's got an insane short float and there starts the squeeze on January 22nd, January 23rd, and now January 26th. Currently, I am looking at the stock's price and it is trading at $162, $164, sorry, it changed so fast, $164 a share. So we're up about $20 from the closing price of the current day on January 26. This thing keeps going up. It just traded 166. So the shorts are getting squeezed and this is a part of a gamma squeeze as well. So I'm gonna be doing a video on a gamma squeeze too. So I'm gonna drop that as well so you guys understand the difference. But basically what we're seeing is this unfathomable short getting squeeze that's over 140%. So when we look at stocks like these with massive short floats, let's just go back and look at what the screener has to offer. Um, typically, we're just going through and seeing what kind of structure is playing out and um, how we could potentially take advantage of these. So ideally, the higher the short float, the better, and especially if it's close to a resistance point, because through that resistance point, we're going to get a pretty extended buy stop run, which could see a large change in price. You can see GME up this is ridiculous but 93 percent today you've seen rdhl up about six percent wb up about six percent um, other ones 
Bed Bath & Beyond up nearly 20% today, Fubo up about 7.6% today. So a lot of these are coming into key resistance points. You can see Fizz that we played in the room up pretty drastically, GoGo 16%. OTRK up drastically as well. So what we could do is now that we've identified these short floats, we can just go into charts here and see which ones based on a structural perspective look really good. So WB was really good because we just broke a key resistance point right here. Um, Fubo has been pretty good for a few days. AMCX, you can see um, just recently broke some resistance and ran. All of these are just straight runners and screamers to the upside. MAC, we were playing that as well. Um, so let's take a look at some of the examples here. So this one is very interesting that has not gone yet. Keep an eye on XL here. XL has a very interesting position. It's got a 51.7% short float. It has options on it. I don't know how liquid they may be, but right now what we're seeing on a structural perspective is, okay, we've dropped, but if we clear some of these highs that had been rejected time and time again, we are going to see the short squeeze, as we mentioned before, in action. This short interest is going to propel that sporadic buying to get out of a position and the longs covering their shorts, right? So an area that we could be watching, if we look at this, would be around 23.52 on a daily. So why don't we go to trading view and analyze this a little better. But if you go to this screener and you're analyzing short floats, this is a great way to use Finviz to get that buy stop or that short squeeze run to the upside. So let's go ahead and go to trading view. We'll keep XL in mind. So here we've got XL and you can see we are in a downward sloping trend. So you might be thinking, okay, well, we've dropped so much. Why on earth would you buy this stock? Now, the simple answer is because I'm going to identify a threshold level where I could see a breakout for that continued run. So that means that if we pass through a certain level, I have a pretty high probability chance that we're going to see that short squeeze happen. Why is that? Because if you buy above a certain resistance for the breakout, what you'll typically see is the short scrambling. So imagine you're short from somewhere here, right? You're short from the 30. Okay, great. You're short from the 25. Okay, amazing. Then you start shorting at the 23, but you stop seeing an extended move to the downside like you saw from here. From 35 all the way down to 20, you've got this $15 drop, right? Amazing. However, you start shorting from here, these 23s, you're getting a $3 drop. Start shorting here again, 23s, and now you may get a $4 drop, right? You start shorting these levels and you're getting these minuscule drops what may be happening is is the shorts are being exhausted right so that means that if we pass a certain threshold it doesn't necessarily have to be these tops now naturally if we break through the tops at 35 yes we're going to see that pump higher right that's fine but we can see a short squeeze that happens earlier than that right in this case we're not near a high ideally we would have liked to be near a high for the short squeeze to continue but that's okay we're not near a high and what we could see right here like this is okay well we've got a box at this level that will open up the short squeeze right because if we start printing higher highs here and we pass the threshold level of this wick we can identify as 2359, we could get that extended short squeeze. Now, considering it's a 51, 52% short squeeze, short float, we will have a large potential move off of this. So if we grab the impulse start to the high, to the most recent low area, you can see target number one on the short squeeze would be the 50% mark around 28 to 25 for that continued pump. So that's what I'm looking at here for this short squeeze. If we take a look at another asset that had an amazing short squeeze with a high short float recently it was Fizz, right? National Beverage Corp. So look at this thing. This thing started that short squeeze where at a very recent high, all we had to do was break these wick tops and get long this breakout for that short squeeze. Because imagine shorten from here, right? Shorten from here, it's not going anywhere. It already ran some of these stops. Now through this, through these wicks, about 132, this yielded over or nearly 2000% return on this short squeeze that pumped all the way up. And today, if you held it, I got rid of it on day one, but if you held it, you could have had even more. So these short squeezes are outstanding. I love to watch the short squeezes 
for these moves. So if we do the analysis and see what the potential of this idea was, we could say that we have already exhausted the potential of this move based on a fib. That doesn't mean it can't run more, but we've already climbed well through that one and a half percent area, right? 150% of the game. So that is the power of the short squeeze. Keep that in mind. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We're going to be doing a gamma squeeze video as well. Drop a comment down below if you like that. Smash that like button. And here's to with a few words. Hello, and thank you for watching this video. I want to take a moment to invite you to an exclusive online trading masterclass. In this event, you're going to learn three key things to help take your trading to the next level. Number one, we're going to teach you a complete price action strategy used by professional traders on a daily basis plus give you the checklist so you know how to check off each step to qualify the opportunities. Number two, we're gonna teach you how to use advanced order flow analytics to help you qualify high probability, low risk trade setups on a daily basis. Plus, we're gonna teach you how to use that order flow to disqualify the trades that you're used to taking that end up being stopped out. Number three, we're gonna show you how you can apply all of this information with a small account because you can start small and scale up. In fact, that's the only way to start, and a lot of our traders are doing it in our community on a daily basis. This is an exclusive offer you can get online only at this event. I look forward to seeing you at this masterclass and teaching you these three secrets of highly profitable day trading. Take care and have a great day.